Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Al Brek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting attended by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Sakhir Palace. His Majesty the King lauded the kingdom's wide-ranging achievements and praised the steadily improving government performance, commending the role played by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in leading the government towards further development and establishing excellence and a creativity as the basis of its work to achieve the desired goals. His Majesty affirmed that the achievements made by the executive and legislative authorities as a result of their ongoing cooperation reflect the advanced outcomes of national development and motivate all to exert further efforts to better serve the nation and its citizens. His Majesty held the agreement reached by the executive and legislative authorities on the draft state budget for the fiscal year 2023-2024, affirming the unwavering keenness to improve the living standards of low and medium income citizens whose interests were taken into consideration in the agreed upon draft budget. He stressed the importance of continuing to achieve the goals of financial sustainability and economic growth to create quality opportunities for citizens. His Majesty the King gave directive to expedite the development and implementation of plans and projects that would protect the environment and contribute to achieving food and water security. He tasked the government with adopting initiatives that enhance food security and support national products to ensure food security and sustainability through developing national capabilities in the field of food industries, ensuring an infrastructure capable of responding to the requirements of the present and the future food and water security, and stimulating the private sector to invest in these areas key partners in various fields of development. His Majesty then commended the role played by charities in promoting noble humanitarian work, underlining the importance of adhering to laws and regulations that govern their work and ensure their improved performance. On addressing regional and global issues, His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the custodian of the two Holy Mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, for the warm welcome and hospitality accorded to the participants in the 32nd Arab Summit in Jeddah, highlighting the importance of the topics on its agenda in strengthening joint Arab action. His Majesty also welcomed Arab leaders to the 33rd Arab Summit to be hosted by Bahrain in 2024. His Majesty the King also congratulated the leaders of the GCC countries on the 42nd anniversary of the GCC, praising the bloc's landmark achievements since its establishment and affirming the Kingdom's support for the joint GCC action in a manner that achieves the interests of its member states and people. For his part, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister extended on behalf of the government his deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for commending the improved performance of the government. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Royal Appreciation would encourage the government personnel to double their efforts and work as one team so that the government performance always achieves Royal Visions. His Royal Highness instructed the ministries and government agencies to implement the Royal Directive to serve the interests of the Kingdom and citizens. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on his re-election for a new term. His Majesty the King wished President Erdogan every success in his presidential duties to achieve the aspirations of the brotherly Turkish people for more progress and prosperity. His Majesty lauded the deep-rooted historic bahraini turkish relations, affirming the kingdom's keenness to continue enhancing its distinguished ties and cooperation with uh, Turkey at all levels to achieve common interests. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, on his re-election for a new term. His Royal Highness wished President-elect Recep Tayyip Erdogan success in his presidential duties and further progress and prosperity for Turkey. His Royal Highness commended the long-standing Bahraini-Turkish relations and expressed the Kingdom's commitment to further enhancing ties and cooperation with Turkey. Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the Commander of the GCC Unified Military Command, Lieutenant General Aida bin Awad Al Shalawi, in the presence of Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Dhiab bin Sagar Naimi. The Commander-in-Chief praised the fruitful efforts of the Unified Military Command in consolidating the unity of purpose and destiny that binds the GCC countries. Sheikh Khalifa lauded the cooperation of all affiliates of the command and expressed his appreciation for their sincere work in all sectors and formations, which contribute to the development of joint defense cooperation and supports defense capabilities of the GCC Armed Forces. The meeting was attended by the Director of the General Headquarters Court, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff for Operations, Major General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadala, and a number of senior BDF officers. 
Under the patronage of the National Security Advisor, Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council and Commander of the Royal Guard, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a celebration was held for planting the 100,000 mangrove tree, which is implemented by the BDF's Royal Guard in cooperation with the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture as part of the Kingdom's afforestation plan. Upon arrival, His Highness was received by the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa'al Mbarak, the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dayna, the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawad, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad Al Malki, and a number of officials. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was briefed on the stages of planting the mangrove oasis. His Highness then planted the 100,000th grand grove tree. The project aims to preserve marine life and maintain ecological balance. On the occasion, His Highness affirmed that the project comes in implementation of the goals of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, who always supports all the Kingdom's important and vital projects. He hailed the support of His Royal Highness Sikh Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the National Plan for Afforestation aimed at doubling the number of trees in Bahrain, increasing the green area and achieving environmental balance. His Highness stressed Bahrain's commitment to reducing carbon emissions by 50% by 2035 and reaching zero neutrality in 2060, which was launched at the 26th Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, which was translated into a number of initiatives, including the expansion of the cultivation of mangroves. His Highness hailed the directors of the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, to harness all efforts to ensure the success of this vital eco-project. He described the ambitious program as a key milestone in Bahrain, stressing the importance of mitigating the effects of climate change in a symbolic manner at all levels. He highlighted the need to provide an incubating environment for marine life and for birds, especially migratory birds that are abundant in Bahrain. The ceremony was also attended by the Royal Guard Deputy Commander Major General Hamad Khalifa Al Naimi and other invitees. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday attended the 54th graduation ceremony of the Bahrain School held under his patronage. His Highness highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa's unwavering support of the Kingdom's educational system. His Highness noted the importance of Bahrain's educational system in driving the Kingdom's development forward. His Highness also said that education is central to shaping young Bahrainis so that they are equipped with the skills and knowledge necessary to succeed. His Highness affirmed that the Bahraini people are distinguished by their creativity and pursuit of excellence evidenced by their wide-ranging achievements. His Highness noted that education is the foundation for the Kingdom's progress and development and emphasized the importance of higher education in shaping one's dreams and aspirations. His Highness presented the graduates with their certificates, wished them success in their future endeavors and encouraged them to continue pursuing their academics. He urged students to utilize their skills and knowledge in service of the kingdom and in line with its comprehensive development.
The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, expressed pride in the continuous support and directive the legislative authority received from His Majesty the King. He affirmed that His Majesty the King's appreciation of the outcomes of the fruitful cooperation between the two authorities enhanced efforts in carrying out national responsibilities. Asala hailed the national efforts that contribute to the implementation of His Majesty's directives to improve the standard of living of citizens with limited and medium incomes. He pointed out that the existing frameworks and mechanisms of cooperation and consultation with the government are reflected effectively and positively on the sustainability of national action. Asalah noted that the Council will continue to present legislative initiatives and proposals that advance the system of national laws and are in line with progress and prosperity in various development fields. The roundtable discussions entitled Electronic Fraud, Challenges and Confrontation concluded, which began yesterday under the patronage of Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bu'inin. During the discussions, the cybercrime prosecution, which specializes in investigating electronic fraud crimes, presented the most prominent challenges in facing this new type of crime and proposed solutions to reduce its spread. The participating parties also presented their vision regarding solutions to the relative legal and technical challenges in order to track and fund the funds and recover them as well as overcome all practical difficulties to track down the perpetrators and prosecute them locally and internationally. And to speak more about the roundtable discussions we have with us on the phone, Prosecutor Mr. Mohammed Sitri from the Public Prosecution. Hello Mr. Sitri. Can you tell us more about the most important topics that were discussed during the first day of the roundtable discussions? Um, hello and good evening. Today, the roundtable event titled uh, Electronic Fraud, Challenges and Confrontation resumed. The roundtable was launched yesterday under the patronage of His Excellency, the Attorney General. The discussions uh, covered uh, various theoretical and uh, practical aspects related to confronting uh, electronic fraud, where they focus on identifying gaps and uh, challenges and effectively addressing the new forms of this crime. The event on, the, on its second day and last day concluded with a set of recommendations. These included the need to strengthen legislation to quickly control the spread of electronic fraud and identify those responsible for committing it. There was also a call to raise uh, public awareness of the dangers associated with electronic fraud, as well as the need for a uh, swift and effective technical procedures to detect and prosecute perpetrators. Lastly, the banking sector was also urged to monitor all banking transactions and report any suspicious activity uh, that may be linked with electronic fraud. That's great. Thank you very much. That was Prosecutor Mr. Mohamed Sitri. Thank you very much for being with us. Bahrain's ambassador to the U.S., Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in the roundtable session entitled Cybersecurity Creates New Horizons for the Abrahamic Accords, a core organized by the Atlantic Council. The ambassador highlighted the importance of cooperation in the field of cybersecurity to address challenges and cyber attacks in the region. He stated that the region was experiencing a significant shift in electronic services, which creates more potential for new cybersecurity challenges. The ambassador commended the Bahrain U.S. cooperation and partner countries to build the international alliance for the security and protection of freedom of maritime navigation. He said that this should play a direct role in maintaining the stability of global energy prices. Sheikh Abdullah said that His Majesty the King has laid out an approach of strengthening cooperation and exchanging of expertise to support international efforts in maintaining security and stability in the region. Joint meetings and continuous cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities achieved positive results regarding consensus on the state's general budget for the fiscal years 2023-2024, which aims to improve the standard of living for citizens and maintain financial stability and positive economic growth for the kingdom.
Standard & Poor's Global Credit Rating Agency announced that the credit rating for Bahrain stands at BB+, which maintains a positive outlook. This rating is a positive step that is reflected in foreign investors' view of the local market and affirms the effectiveness of government policies taken through the Fiscal Balance Program and the Economic Recovery Plan. The financial results during 2022 achieved an increase in public revenues and a decrease in fiscal deficit levels, with Bahrain maintaining its commitment to implementing government projects that aim to achieve the desired aspirations and goals. This growth was achieved thanks to the continued efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister as Bahrain's economy grew by 4.9% last year.